Chariot LARP Beta. This is going to be our first in-game session. Uh, but before we begin, we're going to start with some uh, out-of-game housekeeping as we always do. So uh, for those watching at home, uh, the participants usually gather online about 15 minutes before we stream. And we talk about any kind of, you know, issues, plot developments, uh, emotional safety stuff, etc. And uh, then we kind of go from there. So that's what we've been doing for the last 15 minutes. We do a sound check, make sure you can hear all of us well. And uh, then we, we kind of get going. So last time we covered our uh, out-of-character introductions and we talked about our characters and facilitated some character relationships. We had two players that were unable to join us last time, but they are here today. And uh, one of them has actually done this LARP before. Uh, so we're going to start with her. And um, I'm going to be very rude and mute my mic and eat since I haven't had anything to eat all day. Uh, and I'm going to just kind of let them uh, let them do their thing and introduce themselves at a game, talk a little bit about their character, and then uh, we'll have some free discussion on... Um, you know, uh, any additional character connections. And then um, in about 15 or 20 minutes, I am going to step back in and uh, give a little spiel, and then we will be able to just get in game and go. So this is super exciting. All right. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute uh, and let Sharon take over. Uh, Laurie, do you want to do a sound test real fast? I can do that. Can you guys hear me? I can. Awesome. Welcome. Uh, that's the other Thanks. big important thing we always do is just make sure the sound checks good because sound is always like the most difficult thing to get right, especially with my streaming setup. So awesome. Great. So uh, with without further ado, then I'm going to go ahead and mute it and I'm going to hand it over to Sharon for introductions. Okay. So hi, I'm Sharon, and I'm playing Francis Proctor, who is the chief geneticist on board the ship. And um, what you would know about me is that um, I kind of appeared out of nowhere and did this like whiz kid mercurial rise in terms of the genetics world. Um, I very quickly became a professor at Harvard at a very young age. I run a thriving um, and innovative genetics lab. Um, and um, I've been trying, they've, they've been trying to recruit me for this effort for a while. And uh, mostly it hasn't succeeded, but all of a sudden at this point, it's like somehow the right thing was said and I came on board. Um, and so that's things you would all know. Um, You'll find out I'm very passionate about using genetics to try to um, improve the chances of survival for the colony. And um, you'll hear I've kind of emphatic about that. Um, I Now, some of you guys I would know at Harvard and stuff like that. So, Lori, I know your character. Who else would yeah, I have? Yeah. Yep. And Corey and I have talked about some backstory stuff. You'd know my character, too. She's the okay. heart. Because she's at Harvard. And remind me, your your character name again is? Uh, Marilyn Knight. Okay. And is the whatever. I'm sorry. I'm still trying to learn all this oh, no, stuff. Oh, no, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, Chief Medical Officer. Chief Medical Officer. Okay. And so as a geneticist and Chief Medical Officer, kind of we interface and either agree or disagree. We'll have to see. It's kind of fine either way. So that's what I know right now. And Tara, I've, I've worked on some relationships with Terry. Um with Lori, we talked about the fact that she would have been in my class until she tried to blow everything up. Um, Not blow everything up, just elect a really great student body president. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the room was, you know, hey. So. Um, I voted for Stabby. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, yeah and uh, Frances probably like looked at it and was like, oh, God. Um, but that's Frances. She's a little, she can be a little humorless sometimes. Um, uh, she's worth noting about the. Worth noting possibly is that I started Harvard very young too, 16. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there, did we had maybe some connection there, you tried to make me a better person. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I probably tried to take you under my wing because I was, um, for me, it was graduate school is where I really started applying myself. And from there, I kind of went on. So maybe when you were an undergrad, I kind of saw some of you and me and tried to kind of mentor you. 
Sounds great. Sorry so. it didn't work out. <laughs> All right. So that's me, and um, yeah, I've played Chariot before, but every run is new, so we get to do all kinds of new stuff. All right, uh, I'm Jessica. I'm playing Roxy Sweet, who, uh, that's not her real name, but you will not find out her real name, because that's her stage <laughs> name. Um, <laughs> she is an actress who starred in the famous blockbuster movie Starcross, which is basically Space Titanic. Come on. Um, she mostly does uh, movies, uh, romance with a romance angle. She's a very dramatic person. Um, Mock value. Uh, we'll say controversial things just to get her name out there and that kind of thing. So um, her, uh, her hair today is pink. Um, it was blue last week. I guess we'll see what it is next week. <laughs> Um, I'm going to be wearing all the costumes for this. So, um, character connections. Uh, her movie is as popular as Titanic is in the real world. So if you were somebody who liked that movie, you would probably have liked this one. Or, and if your character who would have hated that movie, you probably would have hated this one. Um, you might not know her name, but you definitely would recognize her face because she's always steeped in controversy. I posted a fake TMZ poster in the chat that I photoshopped about Roxy. So um, that's what you would know about her. Mostly the bad. She's not all bad. She does have redeeming quality. She works very closely with creative-related charities. But all in all, she's a pretty shit person. I would love it. Would you like to make a character connection where your character was on my character show? And oh, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. maybe with, maybe like a cameo. Maybe with some sort of like rehab special, but she, your character, like shocked the world by feeling she wasn't actually an addict. I'm feeling uh, that whole no, like, Martha Stewart 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 I wanted to do. Uh, Martha Stewart and Snoop Dogg are actually like BFFs in real life. No, so I'm talking about uh, like Danielle. Oh. <laughs> oh, uh, my thing was like, uh, like uh, there was a rehab episode on my show, like recovery, and you were supposed to make an appearance and everything, and you came onto the show and revealed that you weren't actually addicted to anything. But if your character yeah, is that's... an addict, that oh yeah, definitely. So do you want yeah, her to have come on the show then? For she is, yeah. Yeah, and she would have played it up for the show. She would have been, like, perfect because she would have made it all dramatic and perfect, but then never got any better. <laughs> so, yeah, perfect. <laughs> so that's it for me. <laughs> any questions? <laughs> awesome. Great work, everyone. Thank you for giving me, like, five minutes to, like, scarf down some food. <laughs> um, woo, the life... <laughs> And so, since those of us weren't here, maybe mm -hmm. we could do is have everybody give like a one minute blurb on the basics of like, this is my character. This is the kind of basic public stuff you would know thing. That would be helpful to me to put the faces to the names in the descriptions. Sure. Yeah. Um, I'm going to do what I did last time. I'm going to start and then run to everyone left as it appears on my screen. So my name is Tara. I'm the game designer of this crazy game. And I play Captain Emily O'Sullivan, um, war hero, um, also a little bit controversial, maybe did some shady stuff, and uh, doesn't really have any hobbies, might be looking to kind of explore what those are, and um, she's like super ready to leave. She's pretty excited about getting off of Earth and going away, so that's, uh, that's Emily. She's a little stern most of the time. She does like to drink. Eventually you'll probably see her uh, with a bottle of some sort. Um, and uh, yeah, that's her. She's she's pretty tough. She doesn't seem to be the most emotional person in the world. Um, and the other, oh, the other mystery about her is you know that because the different ships all exist in the same universe, you know that there was also, that Emily was also on Chariot Alpha. So, like, how, how does one person exist on two ships? It doesn't make sense. So that's kind of a little mystery. 
that has several different possibilities and you are welcome to explore those. So that is me and I will pass it off to Terry. Hi everyone, my name is Terry um, and my character in game is Lucius Relahar. He is the CEO of Relahar & Co, which has crowdfunded the Chariot program. So um, he has a lot of ambitions. He is, uh, he has his hands in a lot of different departments trying to encourage and grow. Um, he's really interested in AI. He's really interested in genetics. And uh, this is about legacy for him, not riches. That's why Jerry was crowdfunded, so that only the best and brightest could get up and into space. Um, so this is kind of, of course, caused a, a huge uprising politically and with corporations across you know, the world. Everybody wants a place on a spaceship and other corporations are trying to do this. So there's already a hacker that's somehow appeared in some of our chats and uh, he's very interested in that. Awesome. Uh, Suzanne. Mm. Yes. Hi. Uh, so I'm Suzanne and I'm playing Tess uh, Larson. I am your chief engineer. Uh, and I, my, my default state is not happy, preoccupied, and, uh, and, and generally uh, concerned about the people not taking the, the seriousness of uh, the tech problems we have uh, uh, enough serious. And I, uh, I'm very anti-AI, uh, and I have an, a very clear agenda in the beginning here. I, I, we have two possible engines. We, can, we have one that is installed, and I want us to rip it out and install another one. I'm going to be pushing that. Awesome. Uh, Sharon, we had uh, Aaron join us um, as we started to go through our intros. So if you could just do a really brief uh, one-sentence thing just so that he's caught up, that would be awesome. Sure. Um, I play Francis Proctor. I am the chief geneticist on the ship. Um, I've been recruited from my elite lab at Harvard University, where I was like the youngest full professor like ever. Um, and I'm very passionate about using genetics to improve uh, survival of um, everybody, um, at, you know, on the planet and stuff like that. Awesome. Laurie. All right. Hi, everyone. I am playing Nora Larson, uh, and you might notice a name match up there because Tess is my dear sister. Um, I am uh, not a chief engineer at all. I am a secondary systems engineer, which I means I am repairing the food replicators, the waste uh, disposal systems, the lights. Um, basically, if we are on critical systems only, I don't have a job. Um, if it's not critical, I fix it. Um, but uh, that's just so that I can be on the ship. My night job is that I am a political consultant and I am working on building a new voting system for Proxima to uh, make it as fair and uh, just and all that sort of thing as uh, it can be. Um, and I have brought a companion with me that most of you would be aware of. Said companion is an AI. Um, and his name is Adam. And that's <laughs> probably as much as most people need to know. <laughs> awesome. He's, Jessica... my business, he's my business partner. Nice. Uh, Jessica, just a brief overview once again. Uh, Jessica and my character is Roxy, Roxy Sweet. Um, Celebrity, actress, lots of space Oscars, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, she played in the future equivalent of Titanic. It was a movie called Starcrossed. It is very well known, won stuff and did stuff. Yeah, that's it. Celebrity. Awesome. Liz. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm playing Bethany Clark, uh, also known as Bit. Uh, I am an AI programmer, and I have quite a number of cybernetic implants. I got my first one when my leg was blown off in an IED explosion when I was seven, and I've been improving myself ever since. And I will be working on um, AI systems and things of that sort, AI maintenance, and I also have some experience with my cybernetic implants, so I can also aid in the system those matters as well. 
Fantastic. Danielle. Hi, I'm Dr. Marilyn Knight. Um, I was um, a prodigy who went to Harvard Medical School early, and now I'm just a regular doctor. Um, you're probably more most familiar with me with my um, TV show, um, Nightly Medical Hour, um, which has been running for five years. So something of a Dr. Oz type. Awesome. Corey. Uh, I play Leland Avery. Uh, he's the chief... Uh, Dang, I'm brain fire now. He is the chief information officer with um, with some high security background. Uh, he worked uh, very closely with <clears throat> with the you know the Rallo Rallo. What, what's I can't ever say that name. The Rallo Hart. There are too many L's in that name. <laughs> yeah, way too many L's. Uh, so Rel Hart, he worked closely with them during their crowdfunding because of a lot of hacking and theft of all their, you know, clients' information and stuff. And uh, through that, uh, he was sought out to be, you know, part of this mission. Um, you know, he has some issues with his past, you know, uh, as well as he has uh, a pregnant fiance that he's debating – on well should he go or can he talk the crew into her coming with you know is is she she would not have made the cut of like if there's like a a list of uh, what types of criteria she's just a basic teacher you know she did graduate from harvard actually but it's just for her teaching degree um and she's pregnant so uh you know there, there are there are things that may or may not come into play for that uh, other than that, you know, I'm still building some other, you know, character uh, ties and stuff, uh, and we'll see how things kind of play out during game with that. Excellent. And Aaron. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to be playing Father Ennio Archivo, who is a Catholic priest, um, uh, member of the church, and very interested in making sure everyone is doing okay, having a good time. He's very open to counseling. Uh, he works as an educator, um, as a teacher, and he enjoys baseball and softball in his free time. Excellent. I'm just changing one thing here on the stream, and then we will be about ready to get started. Uh, so what's going to happen is, there we go, that's all updated. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, we're going to take just a minute for anybody who needs to do any kind of costuming thing, uh, use the bathroom, whatever, uh, and then when we come back we'll get started. Um, I have to put on my captain's sweater because my captain has a sweater. Uh, but other than that, if anyone has anything to do, um, we'll just take a minute and do the thing and then we'll get started. Uh, Tara, can you check your Discord? I asked you a question. Yes, I will do that. So, yeah, if anyone needs to do anything, now's the time. So, in the meantime, how's everyone doing? <laughs> uh, I literally had to run for my flight today. It was not a good time. <laughs> uh, but I made it. That's all that matters. All right. So. I'm proud of you. Thank you. I'm proud of me too. <laughs> I'm not a runner. Shit done. Oh, for, for those of you who are here of interest, um, I introduced it in that video that I posted, but I do have a metal thing glued in here. This is like a, it's an implant that uses piezoelectric to power her. So feel free, she doesn't talk about it much, but feel free to commentate on it if you want to, as you see it. Um, I really like your, uh, your video, Lori. Uh, oh, thank you. Especially like the whole, uh, the whole, oh, why am I wearing such retro clothes? Well, I like the 2050s. <laughs> <laughs> I had to establish myself as a hipster, so I had to make up some shit. <laughs> but yeah. 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 What, 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 what year have we left? Does anyone know? Uh, 2088, 2087. Something like that. 2080, 20, okay. 2050, so whatever. Sometime in the future. Yeah, definitely 2080 something. 
because I went 30 years back deliberately. So, yeah. What does the TMZ article say? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's got to be our, uh, our how, we, how we judge these things, like, right? TMZ. Yeah. Oh, Definitely. Um, one thing I just got approved to tell. Um, so, as chief medical officer, um, my character, let me read. Um, if it, you have certain powers on the ship, um, if someone needs to be relieved of duty or confined to sick bay, that's my character's call. Um, cool. You can expect backup from armed crew members should you need to take such a decision. Nice. Um, for the people who weren't here last time, um, I think you're both back, yes? Uh, I'm back. So, okay, so just FYI, um, I am going to be instituting an in slash out of character voting system as part of my character and then as part of what I'm doing. You're um, it's, yeah, well, basically what I'm going to, what I'm, I'm, what it's going to be, it's, it's going to be a, at the beginning, especially it's a very corruptible system because it's new. So I am going to not only let you vote, but also tell me how you are corrupting the vote. If you are like, say, I don't know if a famous actress decides to put out a blog, um, just trying to sell something really hard or something like that, you know, um, we could, uh, we can do that. But if you are trying to, uh, manipulate the vote. I will be good and pretend I don't know that in character, don't worry, and I'll get with Tara and we'll figure out how successful everybody's manipulations are and what's the most interesting results and all that kind of stuff. If you want something poll, even if you don't want it to come from your character, even if you think, hey, it would be really interesting if the ship held a vote on this, just shoot me a note in Discord and I'll set it up. I've already got a couple things for between session one and session two, and I'll bring that up in character. Um, but, uh, yeah, we'll get some opinion polling going and, uh, I'll be doing some fun graphs and stuff that we can display to the, our, our adoring fans in public out there so they can see what we're doing. Um, and good stuff like that. So I have a question. Yes. So are these polls, are these going to be done with just us, the crew, or are we letting people who are watching vote too? That's I'm, I'm willing to do both. So, um, I can, and, and I guess people watching is that in character or out of character i guess that's a question are these video streams being streamed live for in the universe as well so do we have fans watching us in the universe uh yes we we can do we can do that we can have fans watching us in universe uh it's of course they are yeah we've, we've all got fans right i mean we've got some we've got some famous people on board right we're all pretty notable uh, yeah, there's going to be one session towards the end of the game that's going to be an AMA where I'm actually going to invite all of our friends to come in and ask us, ask our characters questions. So uh, kind of like a big press conference, and it's it's probably going to get pretty wild, and I'm excited about that. Uh, so I, yeah. So, so to, to answer the question about the voting, then I can do anything in that sort of four options in universe, just us. Out of universe, just us. In universe, us with the fans. Out of universe, us with the fans. And whatever combination. So if you want me to open a poll up to the general public, literally, like I'm going to use Google Forms for all of this because it's just easy. Um, if we want to post it on social media and let normal people in 2017 vote, we can do that. And if you want to influence the vote by saying normal people are being, like this is a TMZ poll and the average citizen in 2087 is going to be able to vote on this, then we'll take that into account when I build the results. Yeah, and what I can do is anything like that uh, for a public vote. Uh, Laurie, I can just give you, like, moderator privileges on the Facebook page, and you can just post the poll whenever you want, and we'll get some votes in there, right? So, that sounds awesome. Cool. All right, anything else? Because we're at 8.35, so it's uh, it's go time for in-game. Can our characters assume that everyone else on our ship is meeting like this? Like, there are little mini-groups like ours that are happening the entire ship? Yes. Yeah. Assume that. And, um, you know, uh, oh, oh, you don't like it being streamed. I, I see. Well, feel free to voice that opinion once we go in character. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Assume that other people are meeting and that, um, you know, uh, there are even possibilities, uh, for us to have communication with Chariot Alpha. Because they're not too far out, right? They're only they're only a couple weeks out, so we can still talk to them. Uh, some of us might have known them. Um, feel free to re reach out <clears throat> to any of the players from Alpha. Um, you can post in the Facebook participants group or in the general LARP group in uh, Discord. And uh, you'll probably find people who are like, oh, I'd totally love to have a character connection. It's really cool to build continuity just if you want to. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
All right, if there's nothing else, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to switch over to in-game. And then we'll get started. Let me just switch this to in-game so when people wander into the stream, uh, hopefully they'll get why I'm not, like, talking to them out of game. There we go. <laughs> in-game. Cool. All right, so uh, welcome to uh, Chariot Beta. And... I'm about to go in game here. All right. So, three, two, one, game on. Welcome, all of you. Chariot Beta. This is uh, highly anticipated, a lot of pressure here. Uh, most of you probably recognize me. I am Captain Emily O'Sullivan, and uh, I have the pleasure of uh, captaining this vessel into space and, uh, into the legacy of humanity. And, uh, I understand today we're just going to kind of get to know each other. You know, we're going to spend the rest of our lives together. We're going to live and die with each other. It's kind of a, a big thing. Um, three days ago, I didn't even know if I would be living. You know, the war is still pretty pervasive. I still hear a lot of gunfire even just from where I am. So, uh... It's a little dark. It's rough. Yeah, it's rough. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad to be leaving Earth. Uh, I'm excited about it. You know, I, I know I know it don't necessarily seem exciting, but I, I work long days. Um, I do, uh, I work really hard. It's been tough to transition from, um, from being out in the field, uh, and being in command of a ship to uh, the, all of this preparation work, a lot of paperwork for, uh, for beta, but uh, I, I'm really excited to accept this responsibility, and it's a great honor. So, yeah, I think, um, I think it would be great to maybe hear from, uh, from our CEO next. Uh, maybe you have some inspirational words for everyone. Hi, everyone. Well, first, I'd like to take this opportunity to let you know about a group building exercise uh, that we have planned for tomorrow. It's a drum group drum exercise um, inspired by Francesca, who was on the Alpha Run. Uh, everybody just gets together and makes a little beat on a drum, and it's it's kind of just a way to figure out how our music goes along with each other. So I uh, I think that it would be great to pay tribute to. You know, the, the first group of uh, brave explorers, as you will, that uh, are not that far ahead of us. And I'm, I'm hoping that we can discuss, you know, how our engineer can possibly get us there a little bit faster. I know we've got some great discussions about AI and, and tech and, you know, uh, just different things that are going on. So looking forward to all of that. Yes, yes, very good. Um, um, whenever we are done with this uh, chit chatty thing, we should definitely get right to discussing the engine. Uh, so, so, are we done now? Of course. Can we talk about the engine now? Let's talk about the engine. Yeah, bring up the like engine. We already are. Oh, oh, oh. 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 jump on it. Yes. Uh, sure. I, I hope you all got my, my, my memo earlier. It was a rather long, but uh, but it was very detailed for a reason, because you need to understand all these things. If you don't, we can go through them uh, step by step later. You just contact uh, me, I will, I will, we will work it up. I'm sorry, I'd like for you all to be prepared. This is a short memo from Tess. And I'm sorry, who, who are you exactly? I haven't met most of you yet. Sorry. Ah, I am... I am uh, Tess Larson. I am your chief engineer. Uh, I'm up in uh, orbit right now. I'm in the centrifugal part of the Delta Delta space station, where we're assembling uh, the, the engine part, which will be fitted to the Chariot Beta once it uh, clears. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, orbit. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm so, glad you understand that schematic. I just need some whiskey before I even start to even think about looking at something like that. No whiskey in my engine room. <laughs> All right, I'll keep that to the bridge then. What? Uh, anyway, uh, hey, what's oh. the tanning like in space? 
well, there is a lot of, if, if you want uh, irradiation, Nora, there is plenty of radiation out here. We're but will I be tanned? Unless we take security if, uh, of if you our want to talk, series. If you want to talk tanning, I would be secondary systems. Just putting that out there. So here's Hi, the I'm uh, Nora. Right now, uh, your 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 uh, uh, ship, uh, Chariot Vera, uh, has an engine installed. This engine is uh, currently powered by a cold fusion device. You might know what cold fusion is, yes, from school, yes. Um, if you don't, it's 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 usually something using very small things, right? But but the, your ship is very big. You get that? It's very very big. Uh, and no one has built, uh, used a cold fusion device to power something this big before. So it's very dangerous, so it's bad. It's also very complex and it requires an AI to, to, to run it, to interface between us and the engine, okay? So, bad cold fusion, cold fusion device, then AI. None of this is good. So we should rip it out and replace it with a fission, uh, regular fission uh, uh, engine. It'll take us between 17 and 23 years uh, longer, but it will be safer, uh, and we don't need uh, the AI. Longer? Yes. It, what I was thinking is multiple engines. Is that a possibility? That would definitely take an AI to manage. We, uh, the, the engine, the, the fission engine is, is already consists of, of eight parts. So it doesn't matter if you say eight engines or one engine. It's one engine system. But <laughs> suddenly we, we can we can fit more fission reactions in there. You know, more nuclear reactions in there. Okay, so we can just make the ship for engine. But if uh, as as soon as everyone is okay, when uh, we go a little bit slower, twenty three years. What's that? Uh, and we we when we go safe and we we uh, we kill the AI, then we're good. Didn't we want to get there faster? Wasn't there some race that was mentioned? We need to get there at all. Okay, this this thing I that like Wexler did, the, did put in, but it's not safe. It needs to rip it out. All right. Before we get into any lengthy debate about the engine and about how we're obviously the superior crew and should therefore get there first. Um, let's just go on and hear hear more about who everyone is because. I think it'll help us to debate these topics once we understand a little bit about each other's backgrounds and our experiences. You know, I'm good at blowing stuff up. I'm sure other people have other talents. Yes, good. Everyone talks, and then we decide about ripping the engine out. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, what about what about our geneticist? Um, I'd really like to hear from her. Hello. Uh, for anybody who hasn't met me before, I'm Dr. Frances Proctor. I am currently the mental professor of genetics at Harvard University, and I will be the chief, chief genetics officer on ship, um, which is obviously a key position. Um, obviously, if we're leaving with only 230 or so individuals, which is the number I have been given, uh, we cannot leave the genetics of the several generations that will be in, on the ship to chance. Because if we do that, we have a high likelihood of ending up with unfavorable recessives and significantly weakening ourselves before we arrive on the planet. Uh, therefore, as chief geneticist, it is my job to plan and execute all of the genetic diversity that will happen on ship. Uh, that means, you know, reproduction. People can sleep with whoever they want, but reproduction will be scientifically controlled so as to... Uh, you know, to, to go ahead and, um, I'm sorry, but why do you have a piece of paper there? Oh, sorry, that was very distracting. Anyway, so um, that is my job to ensure that our generations are healthier and healthier as we go, rather than um, potentially ending up with a bunch of sick people who can't function. I'm sorry, I feel like I might be misunderstanding you. Are you proposing gen eugenics for the future generations of the ship? Well, that's a really strong word to use, but, you know, what I would say is that, you know, obviously, if there's unfavorable recessives in such a small gene pool, if we don't do something to control it, we will end up with inbreeding and we will end up with, with highly undesirable traits being propagated. We don't have enough colonists to risk that kind of damage before we land. 
Sounds like the response was, yes, but I wouldn't say it. <laughs> what about the possibility of, of mixing up? You know, um, once we get to the planet, we would have, you know, access to these, I'm, I'm guessing, like, alpha artificial, like, an artificial way to birth people. Why not take the gene pool with us and uh, not restrict people, but allow that for once we get to Proxima? Oh, so, like, bringing um, eggs and sperm and everything like that and that, um, from a wider gene pool and store it oh, we're going on to ice on the ship? Yeah, we're going to do that anyway. But I still believe that uh, especially um, in any kind of genetic decisions need to be made with an overarching view. I mean, there's a limit to exactly how many babies we'll be having on ship and making sure that they're clo they're not, uh, you know, consanguinity and close relationships. And so, yes, that will all be done scientifically and uh, exactingly to, uh, you know, pr make sure that we are as diverse and as functional as possible when we hit the planet. Can oh, we go back well, to introducing it. ourselves before we get into these massive debates? Yeah, oh, sure. I, I think you're up. you're up actually. Um, I, I'd oh. love to know about your role on on my ship. Sure. Hi, I am Nora Larson. I am Tessa's big sister. Um, I know much about the care and feeding of Larsons, and if you'd like to know anything about that, please feel free to message me. Um, other than that, uh, I am the secondary systems technician. Basically, anything that's not immediately critical is going to fall under me. Um, if you want new recipes programmed into the food uh, systems, if you're having trouble with waste reclamator, um, water reclamation, all of that kind of stuff, that's going to be on me. Uh, that's just what I'm doing on the ship, though. I'm actually taking this trip um, as part of my work with Relahart. Uh, Relahart and I, my company, um, Making Laurels, have been putting together a new voting system to sort of shore up the um, the honesty of the process, basically, and to ensure that anything that we do um, is decided uh, by a complete and um, real will of everyone. So I'll be putting some things out. If you guys uh, want to be part of my test cohorts, let me know. I will run a vote about just about anything from is there a God to does pineapple belong on pizza, um, just to make sure that we get some good results and some good data I can use to test. So shoot me a note. I'm in. Um, and oh, speaking of care and feeding of Larson's, when Tess starts doing that, just let her talk until she makes herself tired, and then you can move on. What's that? But I, I, that's totally unprofessional. How can you start talking about that? Like, I... I'm tr it's for the good of the mission. It's for the good of the mission, Tess. We all have to get along, and people need to know that that's how we have to do it. about, about getting, getting the, the robots to work again. My vacuum robots are not working. Why aren't they working? You should be doing that. You should vote for them more often. <laughs> I'm not going to talk to my the, the, the little things. They should around. I mean, not not to be rude, but we do have a few very notable personalities in our midst, and I, I know that one of them, uh, we've seen her on the the big screen before, and I I love to hear from our resident superstar actress about uh, life in general and what she thinks it might be like on uh, on Chariot Beta. Well. First, I'm going to take a sip of this cold, crisp diamond water that is filtered with real diamonds. Hashtag spotter. Fancy. What do I think about Chariot? Not much. Not much. I don't want to be here. And so that's it. That's all I have to say about that one. Well, we do value your cultural contributions, and uh, I'm sure you'll do a great deal to enhance the morale of the crew. You're not going to value it for long, because as soon as I'm able to, I'm going to cry genetically freeze myself. But why are you here? Water. A lot of people are waiting to, to get a spot. Why are you here? It doesn't matter why I'm here. Well, it's sort of that, it's sort of all that matters. It might matter to you, but... Um, <laughs> I like you already. All right, great. Well, uh, we have fame in our midst. That's fantastic. That's that's fantastic. Um, moving Are on. We all blessed. Yes. 
<laughs> Moving on, I'm aware that we have um, somebody who specializes in uh, cybernetics with us, and I would love to hear from her. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> just checking. Um, so, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Bethany. I do AI development and I also have quite a bit of work on cybernetics, actually. I have quite a number of cybernetic implants myself. I think right now I'm going on 23. Well, that's impressive. 24. I almost forgot one. So, um, I'll be working with the crew on making sure that um, if anybody needs anything fixed and cybernetics are required for that, then I can make sure that you get the best fit. I can make sure that you keep it going. I keep it running. I can make sure that also the AI programming that's required to help build synchronicity between yourself and your implants is peak. And the AI is required to run several systems, such as that stunning engine. I'll be helping maintain that as well. Well, I, assuming we allow uh, AIs to do that at all, and, and allow that kind of synchronicity between uh, implants uh, and, and, and brains. If we don't, you can become a secondary systems engineer. I understand they need more help. That reminds me. Uh, make sure that I introduce you to my business partner, Adam, won't you? We'll see. All right. Oh, sounds a little better. So, uh, right. Um, uh, speaking of talent, we also have our own, um, our own famous doctor here who has uh, done a lot of work in TV, and I would love to hear from her about uh, how she isn't bitter about um, <laughs> things. Great. Uh, whatever. I am not the social director. That is not my job. Yes, I'm a Dr. Marilyn Knightley, Knight, and I'm very happy to be here. I'm looking forward to get to knowing all of you, and I'm looking forward to moving forward with this project. Excellent. Welcome aboard. That was extremely non-controversial. I'm very pleased by that. Um, wonderful. Uh, so in the event, I'm just going to have another drink. It's fine. So in the event that we have a, uh, a security issue, like a system security issue, I understand we have a cyber threat specialist of sorts here who knows how to handle that, but I'd love to hear from him. Oh, sorry. Uh, I just have to turn back on this is antivirus because he likes to turn it off thinking it makes his internet faster and that's why yeah. his video was lagging earlier uh, so now that that's back on maybe maybe uh because we are live stream correct i mean this yeah is, this is to the public so uh safety first uh please make sure you do not say anything on air that will uh, jeopardize any of our internal onboard accesses uh do not say your favorites of anything. Uh, if you have security questions, please make sure you update them immediately uh, to something that's not the actual question. And My favorite whiskey is Jameson. Yep. So don't use that as a security question, if you would. Uh, also, uh, so I hear the, the talks of AIs and stuff. I'm not against AIs at all, but we would want to make sure we, we have those AIs pass properly through the right channels. Uh, making sure there's no embedded coding, uh, because as as we all know, we have had some issues with hackers in the past with during some of the crowdfunding, and we want to make sure that we don't we don't bring anything on board that's going to have any backdoors or trojan viruses or anything that's going to jeopardize our launch. As uh, you know, AIs do have access to special systems; they may uh, allow things to make changes that we don't want. Uh, don't. Don't worry much. I will be uh, making sure to, you know, keep track of things. And, uh, you know, I, I, I have a lot of uh, firewalls in place, but there are some really good hackers out there, so we have to be very careful. Uh, oh, uh, Leland. Leland Avery, by the way. Sorry. Um, I, I really Leland. have to. Leland. Yes? It 
it's it's you. Yeah, who's that? France Francis. Oh, well, I oh. I have to get back to uh, the antivirus stuff. You're you're coming on this trip. Yes. Uh, you you know each other. <laughs> say that. This is like something out of a romance novel, isn't it? Oh, well, I would hardly call it romantic. Um, we've been divorced for how long now and haven't spoken <laughs> since that time? <laughs> oh, this cohort's my favorite. And yeah, here I was hoping we'd be a non-confrontational group of people and we'd all get along. Well, well I have at least I two divorced that. couples on board now, so that's great. What? What do you mean two divorced couples? I told you, I need to make sure everybody meets my business partner, Adam. That's just, that's just cruel and, 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 and weird, Lori. If, if that's the kind of talk that would disqualify from you, you from a psychological Wait, standpoint. So, you say things like that. So are we bringing aboard an extra passenger? I don't recall this Adam being on the manifest. He's no, no, we're not, not, there is no other person. There is no person here. No person. He's not physically present. He is an artist who has uploaded himself fully and exists in data storage. Don't listen. You can. All right, before before we get introduced to Adam, oh, wow, um, it's probably rather fitting that our religious council has had a chance to hear all of our uh, introductions. I'm sure he has a lot of thoughts and feelings on everything happening here. Um, let's let's go ahead and hear from our priest before we before we move on to these controversial topics, shall we? Uh, thank you, Captain. Um, thank you, everyone. Um, I'm really uh, I'll admit I will confess uh, that I am both excited, thrilled, um, and and honestly slightly nervous uh, about this undertaking. I understand we're all doing a lot. We're giving up a lot. We're leaving the home that we've known for all our lives, that humans have known for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And it's a great undertaking, and, and I think we should be very proud that we're able to do this. And look at this adventure that we're about to take with a very um, open eye. Uh, I was looking up some interesting quotes that, that hopefully will be inspiring uh, to all of us, um, and I'll, I'll post these um, in a little bit, but uh, hopefully this will give you something to think about. Um, the life, the first one is, the life you have led does not need to be the only life you have. That's from Anna Quinlan. I thought that might be appropriate for us. I've heard someone say, uh, a very wise woman said to me once that when we're running, it's better to be running toward something than away from something. And so I hope that all of us are, are realizing what, what we're going to, the hope of humanity, um, to continue on. And I hope we realize what, we're, what we are undertaking and what we're doing. Like Moses in the desert, in the Bible of Exodus, he wasn't able to, uh, to reach the, the Holy Land, but he led them there. And I think that that's sort of the take that I have on this, that, we're, that, that what we're doing, that we are providing a new home, a safer home, possibly a better home for people uh, by what we're sacrificing here in ourselves. And also, I'm kind of excited about this. Um, here's a quote from uh, a great saint, St. Augustine, who said, or who wrote, The world is a book, and those who do not travel read only one page. And for me, it, I'm hoping that, uh, that to take some inspiration from St. Augustine to realize that this is an entire book that we are going to be reading and experiencing, and it's going to be quite a thrill and an adventure. So um, I'm, really, I'm really proud. I'm very pleased uh, to be with all of you. I look forward to this adventure, and I do confess, again, to all of you that I'm a little scared. If any of you are also, please come talk to me. Um, I, my door is open at, at any time for any of you, um, but I hope that maybe we can keep the larger picture in mind for all of us, uh, and I think that'll help smooth over these differences of opinion, which of course we're going to have, and uh, 
as long as we keep the big picture in mind, I think that the outcome of this is just going to be outstanding. Yeah, the the big picture thing. That's that's interesting. I feel like you're. Uh, feel like although some of us do have the big picture in mind, you're the first one that's really gone into detail about it. Um, you know, I gotta say, you know, uh, I might want to talk to you a little bit because, uh, like I said earlier, I had some experiences where um, I didn't know if I was gonna make it to the next step of my life. So I didn't really think I'd be gallivanting in space. Um, I thought I was going to die in the battlefield. So um, as much as I'm ready to leave Earth, uh, I wouldn't say I'm excited about it necessarily because that's it's a weird thing to be excited about when I'm, I don't know if I deserve to be there. Um, so that's kind of a, a tough thing to unpack. But, uh, you know, I feel like a good leader uh, is very forthright about that kind of thing. And, um, you know, I want everybody here to know how I'm feeling, uh, but when it comes to a command decision, I'm very decisive, and I will keep everybody's safety top of mind on this mission. Um, so we have a couple couple topics to talk about here. We wanted to talk about the engine. We wanted to talk about uh, we have different differing opinions on AI, and um, and, and maybe and this is just a suggestion. I am not really a social person myself. But it may behoove us to sort out some interpersonal conflicts before we go on to a uh, spaceship together for the rest of our lives, where we are confined, unable to leave for the duration of the journey until we die. Um, so that's just a suggestion. Uh, how does everyone feel about that? Any any thoughts or opinions there? Oh, and we do have a commentary, by the way. We have. Um, we have some some viewer commentary. Uh, you know, we we have. Been... I think it's important to remind everyone that we are. Go ahead. Who are you talking to? Oh, doctor, I thought you were saying something. That's all right. I was, but you brought up the commentary. I assumed you were going to. Um. Yeah, I'll I'll throw off the commentary and then we can continue on. Uh, the commentary from our viewers. Uh, so this is the future of humanity. We're doomed. Um, options are now drink or pillage. Uh, I promise to relay this to the team. And then, uh, so what? You'll just leave this world in us. Just great. Just like the elite to abandon everyone here. Um, I think that's actually an important thing to bring up. Um, for starters, we should all remember that we're only one of ten. Um, this group is just a small example of the large amount of people who are going to be on the ship with us. And we are fortunate enough to be screened, that have this being streamed live. And I think we should remember that and remember what we're trying to uphold when we discuss these important issues. Because people are watching and they deserve our best. So give them your best. That's very measured and sensible. Yeah. Yes, very. Yes, thank you, and, and, and thank you, Father, uh, for your, uh, what you said earlier, too. I, I think a lot of us have been very stressed with all the preparations and everything going on, and, and uh, like uh, Dr. Knight said as well, you know, we, we haven't really had time to think about we're leaving Earth. <laughs> but it's, well, we've uh, already left. In a few weeks, everyone is we're taking off from the planet. To the, uh, to the, to the commenters, um, well, if, if, if we're the uh, poorest example of humanity, then isn't it good that we're leaving? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just gonna ah. Would it much be better off without us? <laughs> you can have that burnt out shell of a planet. We'll, we, will, we will exercise ourselves from the surface. Don't you worry. Let's not get too smug, though. Really. <laughs> I mean, I'm as much of a... I think a lot of this shit is funny. Don't get me wrong. But there are people who want to go who aren't here. There are, and there, are still, aren't here. there are still several other other ships that are uh, going to be leaving after us. They're That's still true. taking applications. Yeah. I mean, I already I already did a big part in the war. You know, we all know that. Um, and now I've been asked to do a little bit more. So I'm not ever going to be the most diplomatic person here ever. Um, but 
you know, I don't appreciate the commentary that, you know, implies uh, that I'm leaving because I'm some sort of elitist. I didn't even expect to be alive, so uh, this is no a mission of service. Anyone here to die. Well, it's, it's an interesting question, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Uh, who eats, or do we, do we, do we, each of us here, we deserve, deserve to go? I go because otherwise you will all blow up. You, you, uh, you need mm -hmm. me. But, but, uh, and, and uh, the captain says she deserves to go because of the war. Uh, why, why, why do all of you others, why do you deserve to go? I mean, Roxy, you said you didn't even want to go. What's with that? Contract. Can't get out of it. Oh. That's sad. I feel I'll have so to have my attorneys looked into that for you, Roxy. No, I actually think that's kind of a bummer. I mean, no, okay. really. We're, we're going to be better off. Don't get me wrong. We're going to be better off leaving, and it's look, great. you guys but... are nerds. You don't know, okay? I've got followings. I've, I've got massive followings on Twitter and on Instagram and on Facebook. And now i got to leave all that behind and start over and just be a regular person. That's bullshit. A regular person with TMZ articles about them. Uh huh. I'm not sure that you will ever okay. be a regular person. Okay, Don't worry. TMZ is full of lies. All right, TMZ can kiss my ASS. I agree about the regular person thing. Um, I think that would be very difficult for you, ma'am. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my mother here? Man, oh, good lord, I've missed you, Professor. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're missing out because of your contractual obligation. There has to be someone who really don't want to go. I'm sure there is someone. There are thousands of people who want your seat. I mean, it's not right. Oh, well. Sucks to be them, doesn't it? So now you want to go? <laughs> okay, there's a difference between want and then a contract. Have you ever tried to get a contract? Yes. Is yes. your contract with us, with the company? I uh, cannot disclose that. Can I, can I recommend you do what I do on a regular basis, burn your entire life to the ground and start over? It's great for getting out of contracts. I can hook you up. I can make you invisible on the net. Just call me. Why would I want to be invisible? I want everyone to, well, everyone already knows who I am, but I want more to know who I am. Eventually, we're going to make it to this new whatever. Well, I will, because I'll be frozen. You guys, whatever. And I will start a new, I'll be the very first celebrity at this new place. It's all about me. I have a question about you being the first celebrity. If you're cryogenically frozen, there's going to be a generation, like, you know, children and then children, who honestly won't know who you are, because you'll be cryogenically frozen, and you're going to make yourself irrelevant because you're not interacting with people. Are we so I hate not to burst your bubble, but there's a reality going on here. Are we not bringing items from our world to help with the culture of where we're going? We actually just, yeah, we just got a question uh, from a viewer. Uh, will, we, will you make any attempt to preserve the cultural history of the Earth? Uh, or are we just taking the science types, abandoning that which feeds the soul? Well, we, we have, we have a... We have talented people, and we have religious councils, so, I mean, I guess we've preserved something, right? Well, and, and I would like to is all the soul food we need. <laughs> well, no, I, I would like to, <laughs> I, I do have a business partner coming, and he is much more in the arts than he is in the sciences. He is a poet and a writer, um, and quite extraordinary, if I can say so. Um, and uh, I think that uh, you'll all be very impressed with his work, and I know that he's trying to, um, you know, to, to, to do a little little uh, soul lifting um, on the journey. So um, it's not a person. It's not a person. It's a program. It's a person. It's a program. We, 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 we. You, you can't give personhood to programs that you've written. Our, our chat commentary person right. says life is more than just living after AI. I, I feel like that's going to be a little controversial. Life is more than just I, Just living life after AI. Right. 
if you would just talk to him, Tess, you'd realize it's still Adam there. He is still it's Adam. He just has... That's great. Uploading doesn't work, right? When you upload yourself, you kill your body, and your, your mind goes away, and then a little bit of your, your, your thoughts, according to these ex very expensive schemes, are captured in something else. If, uh, father, uh, you, you, you tell her. You can't have a, a person. Uh, you, <laughs> you can't have a person living in a computer. This is a ship of Theseus' problem, and you know it. How many body parts do you have to replace before you become no longer human? Body parts? This is about the soul. Right. So if, if he replaced every one of his body parts should, one by one, you should which to body father. part? I've talked to the father. Thank you. But I'm sure. I'm sorry, father. Please. I'm I'm actually um, curious, Tess. Um, were you there when he um, did the upload? Were, no, were you there I, present? I wasn't in the room. No, no, he. Uh, he told me he was going to do it. I didn't believe him, and I left. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry to hear about that. I think that sort of what this represents is not being able to say goodbye. Uh, I, I, I believe that a lot of what helps, or at least seems to help me, is ceremony and ritual, um, um, history, um, and. When someone undergoes a transition uh, that I assume is was a willing choice um, and, and didn't talk to you about it and you had nothing to say, I think your issue isn't with your sister, but with a person who left you and you don't know why. Um, I'd be happy to talk about this more later. It seems like a, a private matter, um, but I think if we if, if we can look into, uh, you know, if I can meet Adam and whatever that means and, and talk to him about this possibly. Um, cause I think we need some kind of, you know, the, you know, the church has last rights. Um, and, and that's kind of been sort of questioned if last rights can be used before a transition, um, before the upload. Um, uh, I'm, I am comfortable, uh, doing the, the sacrament. And I think something like that brings closure to something. Because we're going to need the two of you, I think, to work together uh, on this. And we shouldn't be leaving these unanswered questions without, clo you know, no closure without something. So I think this might be later, but but I'd be happy to, you know, do, perform a sacrament if Adam's in there. I think we need some kind of significant ceremony to mark a transition of something. And I can talk to you more about it, of what it means and what the soul is later but um i think we have other things to to discuss here i don't want to we do and all the time. and our audience has some interesting specific questions about adam i don't want to upset anybody uh but i do want to relay the commentary uh which is that uh let's see uh more talk about us being a hodgepodge crew cracking before launch um but uh what happens to your body after upload um, do they murder you so there aren't two copies? Uh, so there's some questions about yeah, yeah. the circumstances. They, they, murder, they murder the person. Okay, so so physically there is no Adam, but uh, Adam is in the machine, and um, presumably somebody in a machine could be hacked and corrupted, am I correct? I yeah. would like to argue both that no, it was not a murder, it was assisted suicide. However you feel about that, that's fine. And even that isn't quite the right word for it. I'm not sure we have a proper word for these transitions because, again, he didn't die. He moved to a different shell, and that's what that is. Mm -hmm. And I, f I feel like this whole discussion is kind of discounting its use in instances where somebody finds themselves terribly injured. They still have a life ahead of them, but their body can no longer sustain them, such as people who are injured in the war. This, this is what I mean by a ship of Theseus problem. How many, you know, you lose a leg, you get a, you get a cybernetic limb. Nobody even blinks at that. You lose your other leg, you lose an arm, you lose some organs, you lose your spine. Eventually, most of you is cybernetic. At what percentage do we call someone no longer human? When they die and their body, they, they think their mind is in a computer, that's when we say they're no longer human. 
but when does that happen if I'm replacing myself one piece? You know, it, it, you're right. This is not the place for it. And but for those of you way, out there who are watching, Tess and I are going to be fine. Okay? We've had this discussion a thousand times. We are going to probably throw dinner rolls at each other at some point and everything will be okay. But this is a long... I, I mean, we also don't... We also don't have a crucial member of this conversation here, and that person is Adam. Obviously, he has the ability to think for himself in the cloud. Uh, so maybe that's something we could pursue later. Um, maybe if having... Go if ahead. somebody sustains brain damage and they can no longer communicate with their body, do you consider them dead? If they have to get a cybernetic implant, if they need a computer, if they need programming so that they can operate their body... That's, that's a medical saying, question. That's an ethical question. Choice. That is not a captain question. Hey, I'll tell you what. Why don't, I, why don't I put this on a poll for everybody? You have to ask what the world is like as well. No, we talk about Shiva Theseus, but that's distracting from the bigger issue. Is Adam, if he is alive, living the best life possible? Mm. Was this the right decision? And you if it so. was the right decision, you know, did, did this decision lead to him living and thriving? That's the question Thriving. And I have to go ahead. I have to warn everyone. You, you, you realize that what's going to happen now is desperate people all over the world looking into this, wanting to be in a ship, are going to go, oh, maybe I can kill myself and upload myself, and they will take me on one of the chariot ships because we could carry millions, right? They're only a little bit. We carry millions of, of uploaded people. Yes, you, this, you are are encouraging mass suicide. That's a good idea. Do it. No, don't do wow. it. <laughs> no, that is... The processing power to carry that many people uh, would actually require a lot of hardware that would make it don't do not well, feasible to carry that, that, that many people. Question. Is allowing Adam on the ship the right thing to do? If he is alive, that makes him an additional passenger. Does and and can he reproduce? Does that fall under genetics or does that fall under systems administration? Uh, I can tell you job, he's not interested in reproducing. And he does work with me. He is my business partner. He is working on the voting project. But even if he works, he's still a person who wasn't accepted onto the ship. He doesn't have a ticket. He does. I had that arranged. He has, uh, it, is, it has been fully what, arranged for the staff. What is the official Rello Hart and Company... Um, policy on this particular thing yeah boss what's up i mean, wasn't expecting to be uh you know dealing with this this soon but you know my personal opinion on this is that i think it's definitely worth exploring but i guess the question that we need to be asking is what are the rights of ai you know aboard the ship and, and moving forward he, Adam has already been approved to come aboard the ship to assist with the secondary systems, and you know I've I've, I've talked with him. I'm a, an advocate of AI to an extent, um, but personally, I I think I still see a difference between flesh and bones and computer code. Yes, yes. I'd like to weigh in on that and the fact that you know. We're a generation ship. It's going to take three generations to get to Proxima B. And while we're on the ship, we will have access to technological resources, which obviously are somewhat finite unless we have, you know, we might be able to generate some stuff. But the bottom line is, uh, as we use the things, we will have less and less. At the end of three generations, we show up on a planet that we really know very little about. It's too far away to do adequate geological surveys and such. We will not be able to maintain the level of technology that we have right now on a new settlement. For all we know, there it'll be short of metals. It might not have silicon. How are you going to maintain artificial intelligences or cybernetic implants on a planet with potentially no resources? You got to figure when we land, the, the technological stage we're at is going to go backwards by several centuries. That's why I think the genetics is so important because, you know, all of this cybernetic stuff is fine, but when we have no resources, we can't say, oh, by the way, that's fine. We'll just, uh, you know, add five implants when we have no capability of making implants on a new world. I, I have some questions. I'm not exactly sure 
um, I have a lot of questions on this, and I'm not actually sure of this. The first question I have actually, and they're all related to the things you guys have been saying. Um, so to the captain, uh, who's, who's uh, watching this? You say we have commenters. Are they are these named people? Uh, these are uh, anybody who is just publicly tuning in. Uh, but I invite them to name themselves. I don't know if they represent any organizations uh but uh, they are very much welcome to put in, and I'll, I'll put some means for them to, to clarify. But we do have uh, a rogue mistress in chat um, who has a question for our CEO. Um, ask Lucius about the tests they ran on chariot applicants. This information was never released on what kind of tests were done. But some say they were testing genetics. Why? Trying to get rid of those with genetic defects? Uh, we've got a lot of questions about what is the nature of life uh, and some debate about whether or not Adam can um, and should be allowed on, on the ship. So uh, I, I am curious about these tests, uh, and I am also curious, uh, and it's a question to Leland, about uh, whether Adam could potentially be corrupted uh, as a, an entity living in the cloud. I've got three more questions. We, we have a lot of questions, and I'm not exactly sure uh, who will answer this. Uh, Go ahead. Whose laws are, whose laws are we following uh, before we launch? Um, what system of government? Because that kind of determines the rights of artificial intelligence. Um, second, so, and what, what government's laws and rules are we taking with us? Or are we establishing our own system of government? I know we will once we, uh, once our descendants reach the planet, but under what system of government are we are we using when we're on the ship? Secondly, why was this planet chosen um, for the ability to sustain life? But I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that our scientists have been able to determine its resource value um, and something like that as opposed to other planets. And secondly, it, is, the, uh, is the chariot uh, going to land? Is this is this ship going to be land? Because otherwise, the resources that we have on the ship aren't these going to be used as the resources for the planet? Yeah. So the final question about the resources for the ship, uh, I think um, our engineer could probably best answer that. The in terms of the planet itself, it's been deemed as the most viable chance. Uh, of course, we do already have. Uh, real estate and settlements over on Mars, but it, its proximity is so close to Earth, and uh, it doesn't take very long to travel there, months, you know, to travel there, um, that the problems of Earth uh, we're worried about just spilling over to Mars. We're already seeing some fighting there. Um, so the idea is that Proxima B is far enough away that we can start anew without as many conflicts. The government, uh, the political questions, um, I mean, that's that's going to be something that Nora would probably know more about than me, uh, especially regarding the provisional government that we'll be setting up. But until then, I mean, we do have some time from here to there. So, um, yeah, so I'm just kind of delegating those various um, things. And, of course, our CEO might have more information uh, about this. And all of our various departments are going to know a little bit more about um, – answers to these questions than others, uh, you know, but just to address the chat, I mean, scientific minds are just of utmost importance here. And we, you know, we do speaking just as, as individuals who have applied to this program and, um, and, uh, you know, and Lucius, if you'll forgive me for, for speaking a little bit on your behalf here. Um, but I, I feel that this really encompasses your view as well. Uh, that, you know, we really believe in providing the best care and means for advancement while we're aboard Chariot. You know, we believe that everyone deserves the right to uh, to, to have their um, their bodies looked after by our top medical specialists. Uh, so that's why we are science heavy. Um, but you know, I, I'll I've kind of suggested some delegation for the, for responses to those questions, but I'll uh, I'll open it up to um, anyone who wants to weigh in on those questions. They're they're really good questions, Father. I have something to say. Yes. I got a call from my agent earlier, so. <clears throat> Hello, fans. Do not actually kill yourself and try to upload yourself to the computer. 
I retract my earlier statement. Thank you. Noted. Um, to, to maybe get us on a slightly less harried topic, do you guys want to hear what I know about the provisional government? Like, I can talk about that really quickly. Just give great. you a sense of where we're going. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So, as far as on-ship rules go, cap rules. That's, that's the way it is. While we're on the ship, captain makes the rules, captain tells us whether we stay or go, whatever. That's, I don't know, the law of the sea applies here. Um, but once we get to a uh, chariot, one of the things that I've been tasked with is once we get within a, um, a single generation of Proxima, this voting system needs to be in place. Uh, we're going to be uh, trying to set up as uh, uh, balanced a system as possible. We're skipping first past the post. That's ridiculous. We're going to do some um, really good voter math uh, with ranked uh, concordant sets and stuff like that. And then we're going to be trying to look for the future. So we're going to have um, the one rule that's been put in place in terms of these voting that I have to work with is that those, um, I believe it's 18 to 24, are going to be in a uh, voting block that their votes are going to count twice because we want the young to be able to speak particularly loudly um, in favor of, of everything that they want to be in favor of, essentially, um, and, and make sure that the, the, the society looks to the future and that people who have the most future have the greatest stake in it. Um, other than that, I'm going to be putting together um, both logistical, civics-wise, and the actual mathematical and functional parts of the voting system, um, and it's going to be sort of a, um, it's a sort of a hybrid republic crap Anyway, it's not quite what we've seen before, but it's a very well-balanced and mathematically sound system um, to make sure that the true will of the true majority gets heard. Um, so that's why I'm running all of these votes, um, by the way. Um, and uh, so far, I think we're definitely going to be doing one on on breeding. That's a terrible word for it. What do I actually talking about? Reproduction. We're going to ask a few questions about reproduction. We're going to ask a few questions about the engine type, and we'll make sure to ask a few questions about the AI question, too. Um, and uh, we're going to ask both the beta group, and then we're going to open it up to all of the charity, um, excuse me, uh, chariot uh, ships, so that um, once everything is launched, everybody's going to get the appropriate say. Who made the decision about the 18 to 24 year olds getting their votes counted twice? Uh, Mr. Rillo. That wasn't my call. This was that wasn't my decision? call. But arguably, the mo there's not going to be any 18 and 24 year olds for years. Arguably, once we're in space, a vote could be done to completely. This Re remember, this is only on Proxima Endeavor. This is the provisional government once we arrive. Oh, okay. um, on on ship cap rules, like I said, whatever the captain wants to do, those are the rules that I'll go by. Um, but uh, captains, plural. I'm not sure. If yeah, I mean, I I want uh, as far as chariot beta. Um, I want to work with everyone aboard to determine the best, the best methods. Um, I do feel strongly about direct voting. There is such a small population on the ship that it only makes sense that we can, uh, do just as we're starting to do now and have, uh, direct voting on issues by poll. Um, it okay. makes no sense to have an extremely overcomplicated representational government when there's, you know, less than 250 people present. We can all have a voice. We can all vote on these issues directly. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, there well, are some issues. I, I mean, there's voting, but there's also competency. I mean, if we all voted on how to run an engine, um, well, you I'm know, that wouldn't that. make a lot of sense. I mean, we all have responsibilities. One of the biggest rules is that once we're on the ship, we are on the ship. There is a limited amount of qualified people available. You can't decide tomorrow if you are a geneticist that tomorrow you want to be a you're going on the ship and you're trans going into space, that's it. That is your career for life. Yeah. Oh, but of course. But, you know, we might want to think about, um, you know, we're also going to need to teach these careers to the next generation, aren't we? Who's going to teach? Huh. I think that's where AI is going to play a, a huge part, you know. If we can, if you are willing and your, your timeline comes up, you know, I think going AI and storing your knowledge in the cloud, is a great way for us to pass on our information once we do get to this planet. As you were saying earlier, you know, our, our resources are going to be limited. Our knowledge is going to be limited. Our offspring, you know, three generations from now aren't going to know what it's like to live on land. And I think that anybody who's willing to get uploaded into the cloud when it's their time, you know, I'm not going to 
to go as far as saying the assisted suicide route, if, if you want to call it that. Um, we definitely need all hands on deck for as long as we can get your hands on deck. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that's a great solution for passing on our knowledge and information to future generations. And before you blow a gasket test, you can just pretend it's a really fancy speaking spell. I think we should all be part of an educational system um, because we're so limited. Uh, and I'm not sure how much of this ship is automated and how much of your expertise and time is going to be required um, on a day-to-day -day basis and weekly basis. So ho hopefully we're all able to have time to educate the next generation, spend at least a couple hours uh, per week to do it. So, and, and, and I'm actually kind of hoping that we will have an opportunity uh, to create our own art, um, to do our own creative endeavors uh, to keep us going because if we if we simply focus on the mechanical so to speak end of this uh you know the ship will arrive but will humans be getting off the ship let's make sure that our humanity stays intact and i think the way through that is through education and creativity and art yes i agree with that art I, I want to warn everyone about uh, one of the, there are about 8,500, give or take, you know, a few dozen uh, catastrophic error scenarios that we're working with right now in the system. Uh, one of them is called uh, Omega 3Z, uh, and that is uh, when something goes wrong enough with our, our engine, our propulsion system, that uh, we have to use all the ship's available resources to correct it. In this case, everything else, uh, we, 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 we are, we're preparing to wipe out, uh, uh, you know, sift a lot, as much information as we can. Zip it down so that we can take over maybe 80% of all the computer capability of, of the ship to, to care for the catastrophe, okay? To take care of what's going on right now. We can't zip AIs, right? Right bit. Uh, you can't zip by eyes. Uh, they're not. They're they're complex enough. You can't do it. If we allow lots of AIs on the ship, uh, and we need to completely, you know, use all the computer resources in a catastrophic failure mode, then we'd be killing the AIs. It's not that they're alive to be killed. But anyway, that's one of many many reasons why it'd be a bad idea to take up a lot of ship's computer resources with all these artificial brains. I, Mr. Relhart, I would I would caution. I would think I, I suggest to rethink your your suggestion that people uh, upload themselves. So I think your main concern is that you don't want to put all of the decision making capabilities into the hand of the computers, and I, I think that that's a really valid concern, because as we've seen with the the recent hackings, computers are fallible, and we don't know how that's going to work out with AI. So I think what we really need to discuss is putting a plan in motion that limits the capabilities of AI and puts, until things can be settled out, the decision-making authority with the appropriate departments. May I just make a quick uh, quick comment about uh, machines are fallible, programming is fallible. As we can see by how everybody is killing each other right now and all the work going on, people are fallible too. And as we can see by the fact that there's somebody who's decided that they want to sabotage this mission in some way, people are fallible too. So if you decide that you can't trust a computer, well, you certainly can't trust that you know everyone's motives all the time. And like, we don't walk around and inherently trust that every everyone and everything around us has our best interest in mind. Well, we know that people can be bribed and people can be persuaded in different ways so what makes us think that one thing is inherently better than the other if anything an ai can perform tasks more precise and more quickly than a human can unassisted which means that we are more efficient dr knight you had a comment i would say that there are have been safeguards in place for the human element mm -hmm. you know we, there have been protocols that have been set up so that if someone goes out of hand, you know, they can be put into solitary. If a disease suddenly spread across the ship, there is a confinement area. You know, 
if people get unreasonable, there are things to be done. And, and maybe we need uh, a system modeled on what we do for people yeah. for machines. I mean, you know, we have a fantastic system of somebody, if I prove to be incompetent as captain of the ship, as the doctor, you can, you can relieve me. Um, were, right. I, were I an AI, uh, then, you know, we would have to uh, trust our, uh, our programmers to say, you know, this is not secure. Leland would have to say, uh, Captain O'Sullivan, your programming has been corrupted and you're not fit to command. Uh, I mean, isn't that correct? Leland, do you think you could make that, uh, that call if you had to in that hypothetical situation? Uh, I mean, sure. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to figure out why, uh, is not online anymore. I mean, I just, I feel like it's a bit mm. overstepping okay. to immediately go to him, like you would talk to a doctor to decide if somebody's not mentally sound enough to continue out their work. And then when it comes to an AI, instead of having somebody whose expertise is AI and their programming and making sure that they're running properly, you're just overstepping that entirely and going straight to security officers. I think that overall it's a task that requires at least working together on that decision. I, I don't disagree on that. I mean, overall, NAI is ones and zeros. So <laughs> I, 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 I get what you're saying. I, I, I hear it. But overall, at a minimum, it's ones and zeros. It's complex and smart ones and zeros, sure. But, you know, there are soft uh, AIs as well as the hard AIs, um, you know, soft AIs are you're more bot-like AIs, whereas your hard AIs are what you call Adam. Uh, whether or not you say that has a soul, whether or not you say that has, you know, its own thought process, I'm not the judge. I just simply see ones and zeros, and I know how to make sure those ones and zeros don't get into stuff they shouldn't get into. Uh, that being said, I I'm not against the AIs coming on board or being used. I, I do disagree with them, however being used primarily only, uh, you know, it's for teaching. I mean, my fiance is a great teacher. I could not see a computer teaching the way she teaches the kids. So you having it. You have a fiance? Congratulations. Thank you. Well, there is the argument then if we're going to use AI for education, doesn't it make the same amount of sense to replace every necessary person on board with AI to let regular civil civilians on ship? Well, so here's something to keep in mind, though. We're, we're talking as if this is a fundamentally different question than who's the best person to crew this ship. If AI are good for te good teachers, then yeah, they should be teachers. And those of us who have very specific skills that aren't going to be able to be taught any other way, then yeah, then maybe those people should consider uploading themselves when their time has come otherwise. But not every AI is going to be a good teacher and not every system is going to be able to be able to run by an AI better than others. Um, I'm the first person to admit I keep half my records on paper for a lot of good reasons. And that's really old fashioned. You know, thank you. I try to keep the old ways solid. I'm just going to be the one to throw it out there that, uh, you know, I'm a big movie fan. And, you know, if, if we go back to movies from the past and we see, uh, the, the fictional things, and then we go to now, and we see, oh, oh, most of those are happening. Think of a lot of the movies that are about AI and about AI taking over and killing people. So that being said, who's going to be there to stop that from happening? Or who, how are okay. you going to put things in place? For that I mean, that's just an existential I fear. Much, now, I don't know how much of a classic movie nerd you are exactly, but are you trying to suggest that, like, my business partner is going to become Skynet? He's a poet. I think we have a, can I clarify something really quick? Um, the use of the term artificial intelligence, the first word in there, um, and, and I don't think this is just semantics, I think it's important. The first word is artificial, and artificial intelligence are created by people, whereas what happened to Adam is a transfer from a person into a different uh, transition, uh, into a different uh, body form. And I think it's different. Yeah, I think it's really legitimate. Thank you. Radically different, and that they need to be discussed differently. 
So the idea of an artificial intelligence, at least my understanding, is this is something that was created by people um, that, that, that is code or robots or things like that, but they were created. Whereas the transition that Adam has undertaken was from human into a new type of body and the same thing uh, as cybernetic parts. That's the same thing as a transformation, but inherently... Uh, they are still, at least by the church, regarded as a, a person. So in all our discussion, I, I just hope that we're clear on these two things. So, so well, are you suggesting that perhaps artificial intelligence is not the appropriate word, something maybe like virtual intelligence might be mm-hmm. more appropriate when in reference to people who have had their intelligence uploaded? I and this is my personal feeling, the church is still uh, debating this as it is, that, mm-hmm. that, uh, that people who have uploaded are still considered people. The words that we use in artificial intelligence is something that's created, whereas someone has basically transformed their body, their consciousness, into another form. So, uh, and there's a huge debate on this, but these are two separate things. But it, when someone is, is uploaded themselves uh, they are hackable right so we, we've seen right. that we saw we, we we see that we saw that in, in India uh, at the latest uh, coup right they play all claim that they were they were there was sort of hacking going on on the virtual brains there um, and, and 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 so so Nora says that she has this business partner Adam but she could make Adam say and do anything that she wanted no, have any no, opinions could. that that she wanted? She could make uh, Adam uh, like uh, any program. She could make uh, him have have opinions, uh, fall in love, do anything, right? Have you that ever is, tried is to get you to Adam do. of anything? No, you can't. Just it's not like they're not self healing programs. It's not like you're self aware programs. We need to have kill switches on these things, right? We need to be able to shut them down. That's why I'm saying Very the, the safeguards. So I want to I want to go back to uh, you know what. Would you put a suicide switch on the back of someone's neck? No, that's cruel, inhumane, and it's unethical. Having been in war, uh, yes. Everyone does have a kill switch. You can kill a person. You can kill an AI. You can also convince. You can also convince people to do things. You can make people fall in love. You can lie to them. You can you yes. can get them to do things. People have used different. drugs and weapons and all these sorts of things and threats to have people do what they want all over the place. Hell, you can you can take somebody and you can mentally condition them to think whatever you want them to think if you have the time and resources. We've seen that plenty of times. So. Why is it suddenly that this is an issue because somebody has moved on to a different stage of life that you find uncomfortable? So you're trying to dictate the lives of somebody else based off of what you find uncomfortable. That's their decision to do with their life. The Kangston said something very smart here about there being safeguards in place for humans. And I think you are right uh, that you need safeguards in place for humans too. Uh, so that, that pe- people don't go crazy, uh, but when, a ver- when, when an AI or a virtual uh, intelligence goes crazy, worse things happen. We are in an extremely going to be an extremely fragile environment here. Um, I'm all, right now. I'm getting uh, uh, some sort of hacking attacks aimed at the uh, diagnostic system of the engine from this rogue mistress. Is that an AI? I don't know. I don't know how to shut it down. We need control. I, I agree with Leland. Uh, so let's, let's not call it a kill switch at the very least then, please. Thank you. Uh, all right, Lucius, is everything all right over there? Um, I, I'm hearing some chatter about uh, some more hacking, first of all. And secondly, I'd like to know your opinion on where this conversation is going versus your original vision for Chariot uh, and the hope that it kind of embodied. Because this doesn't feel... I'm not saying this has to be a hopeful conversation. We need to, to get through some real issues here. Um, but, you know, especially when we bring into things like the church's views on this and our personal views on this, you know, we need to consider the intent of the creation of Chariot. Uh, did you intend for it to be this or did you want it to look a little different? So my vision for Chariot was to raise the bar and to exceed the limitations that we had always conceived on Earth, to take AI to the next level, to take genetics, engineering, 
technology, everything to the next level. And I think that a really good question was asked earlier, and that was when we're doing these votings, what makes people experts on medical issues or genetics or engineering that we would all vote on that? Um, and I think that we're all highly educational people, highly educated people. But, you know, I, I would be the first to say if someone's talking about engineering, I'm going to trust the engineer. And I, I think that sometimes, you know, you need to find a neutral ground. And I think that with all of this, we need to set aside our personal differences and our views and find a position of compromise so that we can take the ship and, you know, we can make it to Proxima. And instead of being bickering and fighting at each other, you know, land there with so many advances that our offspring and generations to come are going to have a great place to live. Uh, what about what about hacks? Uh, anything happening over there? Or are you okay? Yes, yes. I w I apparently uh, my video went down for a while due to a hack, and Leland was able to fix that for me. Um, but just curious, um, can you tell us on the crew what happens in space if there is a hack? You know, what are the repercussions from the captain's point of view? Mm. Uh, that's a great question. So uh, we're in space. We get hacked. What happens? I mean, the first, the first thing I would advise as a matter of protocol is confinement. So to uh, to isolate the issue and tackle it that way. Um, do it systematically, just like you would root out corruption in any kind of force or other organization. Um, it's the same thing. You're just working with with data. You're working with numbers. So I would isolate that situation. Um, do my best to to calm the crew and the passengers and ensure, you know, that Leland had that under control and that he had the, res the resources that he needed to, uh, to take care of that situation. I would reallocate some resources. So if he needed some more, um, some more, uh, computer power to investigate that or some more, um, crew resources that we could, that we could get that to him. Uh, you know, it is a very real possibility and, um, that's one of many reasons why there is not just one chariot. There are a lot. I mean, I know that I'm probably one of the more grim figures here, but I don't expect every chariot to make it to Proxima B. And that's part of the reason there are multiple chariots. Sorry, I wasn't laughing at you. I Beta is definitely going to make it, though. But what's the punishment, you know, if aboard the ship or if we find someone who's purposely sabotaging the, the, the project right now? If, if the ship is in immediate danger as a result of sabotage, then uh, once we're on board, I mean, that that's a court-martial right there. That's just like military law because that's endangering immediately the lives of everyone on the ship. Uh, so I would lock down that situation immediately and then worry about the justice of it later. Um, but again, isolating the threat uh, and, then, um, and then dealing with that with our legal resources making sure uh, that person had whatever counsel is needed. Uh, I'm sure the father might have some, some more words there regarding what kind of rights any sort of traitor would have. Uh, I, again, I'm not a diplomat. Um, I would just take control of the situation and make sure that we were all okay. Maybe schedule a performance from our, our favorite actress so that uh, people were a little distracted uh, and not so concerned with imminent security threats. Um, you know, these are just basics of leadership uh, and, and Lucius, you're very good with these two. I've, I've, you know, seen and admired your skill from afar and, um, you know, I, I'm sure that we could work together to come up with some plans uh, to ensure the safety and stability of our mission. So I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, in regards to the legal actions of like a cyber attack or, or, or cyber terrorist threat, uh, depending on who's doing it and why, um, here, obviously, all the normal laws take place. But as soon as uh, the ship gets out of, out of orbit, we are no longer under those laws. We are under the laws of whatever the ship makes. So we have to come up with those laws ahead of time. Because if not, we take the chance of someone 
uh, skirting those laws or someone trying to overpower, you know, th those laws. But to answer your question as to the, the severity of a hack in space, uh, if it's someone who's on the ship and gets ha and, and, and is hacking, fine, martial law, whatever, captain has orders there. However, we have AIs coming on board. We have potentially, uh, you know, if, if, if a hacker gets into the system and drops a logic bomb or a Trojan virus or, or, or anything that can stick in the, in the system and I can't find it ahead of time and we launch, that could be catastrophic. I mean, they could mess with secondary systems. They could, you know, literally jettison us out into space without our knowledge while we're sleeping. So that's going to be something that's a top priority for me, uh, as well as anybody that can help me to, uh, you know, back these hackers uh, out before we even launch. I mean, I, I don't think humanity came with a set of laws. These are fundamental things. The laws of science, the laws of medicine, the laws of nature, the laws of, of humanity, our religious uh, organizations. These are things that we developed over time. Uh, whether you believe they were handed to us by a higher power or whether we developed them or whether they were inherent in nature. Uh, we, we didn't just, you know, appear on Earth with all of these laws set. Uh, we're doing some new things here. We're being innovative and uh, we're going to have to adapt. You know, so so I think we do need to be mindful of that. And um, we are we are actually closing in on our time. And I, I really want to make sure that everyone has a chance to say what they need to say and goodness this was supposed to just be an introduction just to say hello to each other and to to get to know who we're going to be spending some time with um but it seems like we have some really differing views on some issues that we should probably resolve before we launch um, we don't have enough time to just say hellos we got to get our information ahead of time because i'm not leaving if we don't have everything documented and properly in order it, it's not it's not beneficial to me to go into space and die because we waited because we wanted to say hello. Well, and I want to say contrary to what the, apparently the people watching have been saying, I think the fact that we dove directly into this and started thinking about some really difficult things and planning this sort of stuff ahead of time speaks very well for this particular group. If we were all super nice and smiling and showing our teeth and everybody was happy and we just you know gave some brittle hellos and walked away, we would not function as a crew. The fact that we're already functioning, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, Tess, but this is as family-like as I've felt in a while. Um, it's <laughs> it's good. I think this is a good feeling, and I'm glad we're getting this out now. And, and most of us, you know, I, I think most of us, I mean, not all of us, to most of us, this is not a, a TV show, right? This is not reality TV or a place for sponsorships. This is a place for us to save humanity, and that that was the vision, and we need to we need to fulfill it. So uh, I'm committed to doing that, um, and I look forward to serving with everyone. I want to give people a real perception of who we are, of who they're sending, uh, and why we're going. Uh, and I think that's it's more important to be authentic, as difficult as that is. Some of the stuff I've been through. Uh, you know, it's more important to be authentic than it is to put on a good show. I think it's important to remember this is a process. This is a process that's going to last three generations. You know, this is We never signed up for anything easy. Awesome. Awesome point. Yeah, so uh, for... Oh, go ahead. I, I, I don't know if we were going to close. I just wanted... There was, a, there was another quote I'd like to close with, but I'm not sure. Are we, are we wrapped yet? Is everyone set? Um, I, I have one... Uh, I have one thing I want to say. Um, the answer to that question, by the way, that appeared on screen is yes. Um, I have one thing that I do want to uh, say. I just want to look at uh, some objectives for next time. Um, Francis, I would love to see uh, your vision for how you want to manage genetics on the ship. Uh, that's another big thing we, we didn't really get to fully this time. And I want to know about what we can expect. Um, Absolutely. I think that's quite important. Okay. Yeah. So I'd love to have a plan for that next time. Um, obviously, we're going to have our voting 
And, uh, you know, Roxy, I'd love to know next time about some of the entertainment that you have in mind. Like, how are we going to be not bored once we're on the ship? What are we going to do? Well, uh, for some reason, I'm in charge of some of the matchmaking. Uh, oh, that'll I'm be probably fun. probably going to have to work with the geneticist a little bit with that. That's going to be fun. I can't wait. Um, Great. Great, let's... I, uh, Let's actually, actually, you can match people with whoever you want. It's the, it, it, reproduction and uh, relationship and sex don't need to be necessarily coinciding. All right, I I'd like to hear. I'd like the two of you to work together, and I'd like to hear your plans for that uh, next. Well, you can't take session. the fun out of it. I, I I don't think anybody's suggesting uh, that, that we take the. Uh, I need a drink. Um, I don't think anyone's suggesting <laughs> that we do it. Uh, but I, I'm just saying we need a plan, and I, I would like to hear what the plan is for that. Um, well, my plan is to help keep morale in a art way. Um, first of all, when it comes to sex and reproduction, can't take the fun out of it. Nothing kills morale faster than just doing it all sciency. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Oh my gosh. You are officially my favorite. Thank you. Well, there's so well, you taste. You're officially my reason to drink. All right. Um Okay, so I want to hear that next time. Um Let's see. Uh Lucius, I'd like to hear next time a little bit about your your corporate vision. I'd like to hear about the outcome of this uh this testing that we've been asked to do. Um, I'd love to know what's going on there. Um, I would like an update at the beginning of next session on the progress of the engines, uh, how, how ready we are to launch, what kind of modifications we've been doing. That's very standard. Mm -hmm. Standard stuff. I'm sure you're prepared there. Um, I would also like to hear uh, maybe something a, a little personal from you a bit about, um, if you don't mind, next session about your experiences, uh, bring a little bit of humanity to this topic of um, artificial implants and cybernetics, if you feel comfortable sharing that with us. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, so I, I would love that. And uh, Dr. Knight, um, you know, you've just been so diplomatic with everyone, and I'd, I'd like to see more of that. Um, but I also appreciate your sincerity and how it comes through, uh, in that, in that diplomacy. Um, that's, that's a real talent that, uh, I know I don't have. Uh, and I look forward to, to hearing that about that a bit more. I look forward to hearing your opinions about, um, about this, this AI business, this medical, the medical aspect of it, people transitioning from one thing to the other. Um, Leland, uh, I know you're, you've got your hands full right now. There are attacks, stuff like that. Uh, yeah. Um, to keep, keep doing what you're doing, uh, making sure we stay online. And Father, um, of course, any more of the, um, the quotes, passages, uh, anything like that that you have for next session, um, I would greatly appreciate if you could prepare something similar so that we could open with something thoughtful to guide our discussions on uh, genetics. It's going to be a very genetics heavy conversation. Um, and uh, just more, what is our soul? What are AI? Uh, do, do I have any volunteers interested in tackling the more legal uh, aspects that that the father brought up? Uh, you know, what laws do we have now? Where are we, you know, before we get on the ship? Who wants okay, to? Sure All right, thank okay. you. Excellent, excellent. Thank I, you. I think it should be a team effort, by the way. It should be a couple of us. I'll take it, take that as well. Great, thank you. All right, I am going to prepare for command of this vessel and uh, relax if I can, uh, Father. I might reach out to you about. Um, a couple issues that I should take care of before launch, but they're they're war things. They're they're things in the past. They're um, it's all it's London. So we'll we'll talk about that. 
Uh, does anybody else have anything to say before we close out the session? I just want to offer if anybody actually wants to talk to Adam before you pass judgment, I can set that up. Excellent. Uh, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Roxy Too Sweet. That's two, the number. Um, if you okay. want any help making sure that Adam is secure, since we have a hacker going around, I can help you out with that. I'm sure he'd appreciate uh, anything that you can do, so I'll put you two in contact. Excellent. All right, so we're going to... Um... The uh, Padre had something to say. Oh, yes. Uh, as Lee Lee did as well. Yeah, well, so my, mine's kind of like, uh, you know, uh, a team-building kind of thought process that I think we all should, uh, you know, be aware of. Uh, it's a quote from a, a great author, uh, Stephen Covey. Uh, it's, uh, seek, first to, uh, seek first to understand, then to be understood. And I think we need to take, a, take that in mind when we come back next session. You know, if, if you're going to just interject your own point each time and you know, one, whoever's watching aren't going to know what's going on. It's going to be very jumbled. But if you're if you're listening and then you're you're responding, it'll definitely help everyone better understand what each point's coming through. So that's a that's a very good one. Uh, thank you. Um, mine, I think, is a interesting one. I found from uh, Andre Guy, a French philosopher uh, from way back in the 20th century. Um, and I apologize for the. Uh, male centric uh, pronouns here, but uh, it says man cannot discover new oceans unless he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. And, uh, and I think that's very profound. I think we need to lose sight of the shore to discover new oceans. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we're going to close out um, to everybody watching us. Thank you so much for, for hanging on and for um, spurring our debate and for interacting with us. We're actually going to have an official AMA session for all members of the crew um, in, in a future session, and we'll highly publicize that. Um, and for now, I'm going to ask our uh, crew and our passengers to, um, to stay online, uh, but I'm going to close out the broadcast so that we can have some, uh, some um, conversation just among the crew. And again, if you're interested uh, in learning more about Chariot, uh, the links have been popping up throughout our, throughout our broadcast. Please go ahead and investigate them. There's also one below uh, the screen. And uh, we can go ahead and um, you can go ahead and check it out and learn more there. So thank you again for joining us. And there is a whole schedule up on Facebook, too. Just go follow us at uh, facebook.com slash Chariot LARP. And you can learn about all our chats and our sessions and um, all the things that us heading into space people will answer for you. So thank you so much. I'm going to end the broadcast. And everybody who is on the Hangout, please do hang on. We are stopping the stream.